this is Douglas Williamson once again with Dr. Petra Kunkel and we are talking again about her new report to the Club of Rome, Stewarding Sustainability Transformations. The last time we were together um, we talked about a conceptual architecture for stewarding sustainability transformations and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the choreography of stewarding sustainability transformations. And I think it's an interesting choice of words that you've chosen choreography. Could you explain why you've chosen that word? That is an interesting term. And I've chosen the term because you, when you look at large scale systems change and the transformation strategies that you want to develop, like for example in a, a climate, climate adaptation strategy or in a sustainable agriculture strategy or in a countrywide energy transition strategy, etc., you need to look at multiple different actors in collaboration projects and in other types of change processes and you need to bring this together into a bigger performance. So that's why people can accuse me of not using the right term but, but in, in a way you need to create a choreography of that different change processes that need to come together. Um, I, I also think now uh, when you say create a choreography it brings me more into this um, sort of back into a different word which is more about designing um, and maybe you could talk a little bit about how do you design a choreography or um, you know based on a conceptual architecture um, that will steward or lead to the stewardship of a sustainability transformation. So the, the architecture helps you to do a, let's say, helpful or most likely successful transformative design of your process. And I want to bring in the process again because many people underestimate you know, what a process architecture actually means. We have a culture of and I always want to say hopping from event to event as if there was nothing in between and I say highlight what is in between and make sure that the events are only part of the process and do have a certain function in the process. So I think many people know this from organizational change processes but in societal and large systems change it, it's almost like a little bit undervalued. That's my, my feeling. So I, I, I really try to push forward for or um, the capability to more consciously design transformative change processes that are geared at large systems change. And the, the, the one chapter looks at what are the transformation enablers, so what are the conditions that I need to create in, you know, in the sense of a pattern in order for a pattern of aliveness to occur in order for systems transformation to become easier. And knowing that you need to steer this because you can't control it, you can't manage, you can hardly steer it, but you need to also have a high level of collaboration, literacy of the actors, and you need to have more actors know how to design a change. So um, when you're designing this choreography, and then we're again at this level where we're talking about multiple change initiatives uh, happening simultaneously which are interconnected, interdependent, they're interrelated to some degree. Um, how do you go about um, really doing this kind of a design um, for um, initiatives or let's say actors, stakeholders that are, are really moving uh, without your consent, without your design, um, how, do you, how do you address that issue um, through your transformation literacy? So what you, what you can do, you can use the con conceptual architecture as a bit of a meta guidance. Let's say, for example, in your country, you want to set up a, a, a countrywide, a nationwide uh, let's say, for example, strategy for uh, transforming to a circular economy. So, uh, on the one hand, you have a lot of things that are actually happening, kind of self-organized action towards circular economy. So this is what you have to pick up. So you have to look at the innovative processes that are already taking place and nurture them and support them and create conditions for more of such innovative processes taking place. But that's not enough. You need to look at what are the structures and processes, administrative processes like, like um, kind of structures in the society that prevent or further 
a transition towards a circular economy. So you have to look at structures and processes. You need to look overall at what are the narratives that you want to attach to a circular economy strategy and how are these narratives enlivening people. So it's not about doing more recycling, you know, like we know we do this. It's about contributing to life processes with the way you operate, with the way you do your business, etc. So that's a that's a very different enlivening narrative that you need to put in place. But you may also need to look at what are the regulations that you need to put in place because without the regulations it's not going to work. And in addition you have to look at what are the governance systems from local to national level that actually function or are dysfunctional in relation to circular economy strategies and how can you kind of shift that a little bit and what 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 in terms of governance because governance often leads to ownership do you need to enhance for as a strategic process and last but not least you need to look at what are the metrics because you may run into difficulties that you're measuring progress for example in terms of gdp or you know kind of typical measurements or other measurements <coughs> and that doesn't that, that, that measurements that don't really measure your progress so you, so you need to ask yourself what are the metrics that really give us a a picture of the process towards circular economy and how can you equip the people who are actually part of the process how can you equip them to measure so that not an outsider measures, but that your metrics are empowering. So you need to bring all these strategies together and this is then a transformative design. So I have one last question for you. Um, how, what are the, the practical implications for this new report for shifting the dysfunctional patterns of behavior in socio-ecological systems towards functional or vital, alive, thriving socio-ecological systems? So the first practical implication is to really shift, shift your mindset and say, wait a minute, when we talk about sustainability transformations, we actually want to support life on this planet. So aliveness is a core concept and we, if we want to to support the planetary aliveness, we need to support plants and animals and lakes and, and oceans aliveness and we need to support our own aliveness. So the first practical implication is to say large systems, processes and individuals self. It's connected and we need to kind of look at it together. The second practical implication is using that architecture with the transformation enablers for the design of large systems change because there are lots of details behind that that you can adhere to and can really sit down and say do we have the right narratives uh, do we have governance systems that support our strategy uh, do we have a, a an innovation support that supports you know kind of our strategy set etc so it's really about almost using it as a a, a mixture between a checklist and a, a meta guidance for the design of your change processes. And when you're in change processes, look at how do you support collaboration literacy among the different actors. And you can use the collaboration catalyst as a kind of monitoring tool for do we have, to, have we developed a strategy together? Are we really um, delivering in a cooperative way? Uh, do we have a dialogic um, communication and do we not just jump from event to event but this is part of the process do we have a proper engagement uh, strategy and and a way of a meaningful engagement of people do we look at different levels of people and how we engage them etc so you can actually use it for the planning and the implementation and the monitoring and even the evaluation of your transformative change processes okay thank you 
That is the end of our uh, vlog series, and I want to thank once again Dr. Petra Kunkel for, for joining me, Douglas Williamson, on this vlog series to discuss and dissect, to go a little bit into detail about her new report to the Club of Rome, Stewarding Sustainability Transformations. It's very exciting to hear this kind of thinking about how we can really make an impact, shift our minds, really start to engage in a systemic way towards stewarding these sustainability transformations. So it's very hopeful. It's a pleasure for me. Petra, thank you very much. And hopefully we will have some more conversations together soon. Thank, Thank you. you.